Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at a technique known as Newton's method to approximating solutions to equations. So what's our big problem here? Well our big motivating problem for this section is we want to try to find a solution to an equation of the form f of x equals zero. So we've got a function, we want to find its roots. Where does it cross the x-axis? Okay, so you may think, well, that's not such a big deal. I've been able to find solutions to equations before, just using algebra, maybe quadratic formula, if it was a quadratic. Um, so yeah, we have techniques for finding exact values of roots of functions, if the algebra allows us to do that. But the problem is we can quickly encounter cases such as, well, for example, what about this equation, cos of x equals x? Can we find the exact value of the solution to this equation? Well, algebra doesn't seem to help us in this case because we need to sort of get a hold of the x which is trapped inside the cosine, but we also have an x outside. So, you know, algebra might not help us here. We might not be able to find the exact value of this, but maybe we're just interested in approximating the value. If we can't find it exactly, maybe we should be content with just approximating the solution. And that's what Newton's method is about. It's about a technique to allow us to approximate solutions to equations like this, cos of x equals x, or other equations where algebra is not going to help us out. So before we get into the nitty-gritty details, let's get a big picture point of view of what Newton's method actually is. And for this, we can use the applet that's available on the website. We have a function here in red. It's got three roots. And I've just chosen it so that we can easily see what the roots are. Negative one, one, and two. And I'd like to discuss the idea of how to approximate these roots. So what we do is we start with an initial guess. And I'll just drag x1 around until, you know, I think the, I'm going to try to approximate this root here. Pretend I don't know what it is. It's two, but pretend I don't know what it is. I'm going to take that as my approximation. So 2.59279. Now, can I make that approximation better? Well, the idea is you head up to the curve and you draw a tangent line there. That's that green thing. Now, that green line will intersect the x-axis at a point. It's got some x-intercepts, so let's identify that. That's x2. Now, what do we notice? We notice that x2 is a better approximation to the root than x1 is. And so that's the big idea. You start with an approximation, you do this tangent line thing, you get a better approximation. Now if we did it again, go up at x2, draw the tangent line on the curve whose x-coordinate is x2, and then find the next point, and we see that the next approximation of the root is even better than the previous one. So we seem to be getting closer and closer. I could do a third approximation, so we're getting really tiny to see on the on the graph itself, but we can see that we're honing in, we're getting closer and closer to that root. Now all of this depended on my initial approximation. The rest was just mechanical. It was go up, find a tangent line, find the intercept. Go up, find the tangent line, find the intercept, and keep going. So if I had a worse initial guess, well, it would just take longer, but my next approximations would still be getting closer and closer to two. What if I took my initial guess to be on the other side of the root? Well, it looks like we're still getting approximations that are heading towards 2. But what happened if I took my initial guess to be close to the other root, 1? Well, then my other points seem to be getting closer and closer to 1. And similarly for the other point over here, if I made a guess of about negative 0.42 or around negative a half, then the business of doing tangent lines to get intercepts to get better and better approximations seems to be going to that one. So it's very dependent on my initial guess, but the rest is just mechanical of finding tangent lines and in inter intersection. So that's the big idea with Newton's method. Start with an initial guess and sort of crank out this procedure of finding tangent lines and intercepts to get better and better approximations. Now, things can go wrong. Um, here I'm interested in finding, maybe I'll turn off all of these lines and then we'll just focus on the points themselves. So here I'm interested in approximating this root. So if I get pretty close with my initial guess, about a half, I see that my 
next approximations seem to be doing a better job and they get closer and closer to zero. But suppose I made an initial guess of, I don't know, let's say two and a half. I didn't quite know where the root was, so I made a guess of two and a half. The first approximation, when I come up to the curve and take its tangent line, it fires me way off out here. So my next approximation is even worse. And then they just it just goes downhill from there. They keep getting worse, worse, and worse. So this can happen. It's highly dependent on your initial guess. If we made our initial guess on the other side of this bump, then they seem to be doing the right thing. They get closer and closer to zero. If I took the initial guess to be on the wrong side of the bump, then my next approximation seems to be doing worse and worse and worse. But that's the big picture of Newton's method. You want to find the approximation for a root, try to pick a nice close value, and do the tangent line business, find an intercept, and keep going and going and going, and hopefully you'll get a sequence of values that are getting closer and closer to the root that you're interested in, so you can find a nice good approximation of that root. Okay, so now we've got the big picture point of view. Let's go through and try to see if we can implement this technique. So the idea is we've got this function. Let me just get a rough sketch of one, maybe some function that looks like this. So this is our, let's say, y equals f of x. And it's got a root, and that's the thing we want to find. So there's its root. We'll call it r. We don't know what it is. That's what we're trying to approximate. So what we're going to do is the idea is to let x1 be an initial guess. So we sort of try to guess what the solution approximately is. So maybe that's my first guess, x1. Okay, I'm not exactly at r, but can I improve this guess? Once I have an initial guess, can I improve it? And the idea was, well, you go up to the function, you look at the tangent line to the function at that point. So there's our tangent line at x1 comma f of x1. And what do you do with this tangent line? Well, now you look at where the tangent line intersects the x-axis. So what is its x-intercept? And we call that x2. So the idea was you have this initial guess which we'll also call the first approximation. It's our first attempt at approximating the value of the root. And then we get from that, through this tangent line process and looking at the x-intercept, we get a second approximation. And if everything's nice, then we expect that the second approximation to be better than the first approximation. So we have expected to improve our approximation. And so that's the idea. So how do we come up with an expression for x2? I mean, part of the implementation is we need to know how to find this x2 if we have the initial guess x1. So let's see how we can do this. Well, we're using the tangent line, so maybe that's the first thing we should do. So let L be the tangent line that we got at x1. What's the equation for the tangent line? So here, this is the tangent line at x1, f of x1. Well, we get that by taking the function value at x1 and adding to it the derivative at x1 times x minus x1. So there's our tangent line. What we would like is to figure out where this intersects the x-axis. So if we've called the x-intercept x2, then this means that plugging x2 into the tangent line should return a y value of 0. So this gives us an equation now for x2 in terms of x1. x1 is this initial guess, this thing we know. x2 is what we want to find. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation for x2. So I'm going to push f of x1 to the other side of the equation as negative f of x1. Then I'm going to divide by f prime of x1. And then I'm going to push over the x1. And so I'll just move this negative down front. And what we have is an expression now 
for x2 in terms of our initial guess, x1. So the second approximation up here in the graph, x2, is just x1 minus f of x1 all over f prime of x1. So if we know our initial guess, we just have to work out x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1 to get the second approximation. Okay, well there's the game. The game is you've got the first approximation, you can use that to get a second approximation. Now if you just pretend that that second approximation, which should have been better than x1, we pretend that was our initial approximation and just iterate the process. Do it again. So we pr repeat this procedure to get a third approximation. How do we get the third approximation? We look at our approximation for getting x2 from x1 and we just apply that same thing now to x2. So we start with x2, we take away f of x2 all over f prime of x2. And that gives us a third approximation, which hopefully is better than the second. And then we can get a fourth approximation and a fifth approximation by keep doing this process over and over to the approximation that comes out. We then feed it back into this machine where it says now take x3 minus f of x3 over f prime of x3. That gives you your fourth approximation. So if we keep repeating this process, then we should obtain a sequence of numbers, x1, x2, x3, and so on. And hopefully these are getting closer and closer and closer to the root the thing we're trying to approximate. So if the numbers become closer and closer to r as m becomes large, then we say the sequence converges to r, converges to the root. And that's the key, is we can start with an initial guess and try to build up this sequence of approximations, which each one in the sequence is better than the previous one. So here's the process in a nutshell. We begin with an initial guess at the root, we then work out a second approximation using the first guess or the first approximation and then we repeat the process. Once we have an nth approximation we can get the next one, the xn plus first approximation by just taking xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn and repeating. So this is called Newton's iterative formula. Newton's iterative formula it means we're going to take this formula and we're going to iterate it. We're going to take whatever comes out and feed it back into it. Xn comes out, you feed it back in, you get x plus xn plus 1. Xn plus 1 comes out, you feed it back in, you get xn plus 2. And you keep going and going and going. When do you stop? Well, that's a good question. You continue this process until you have the desired degree of accuracy that you want. So suppose you want your approximation to k decimal places. Well, you keep going until you have successive approximations, xn and xn plus 1, agreeing to k decimal places. That's the good rule of thumb. You can stop once you get those two iterations agreeing to k decimal places, and now you have an approximation of the root to k decimal places.